necessity to practice caution with the laws of nature. Mm -hmm. Ken? Right? Yes, yes. Okay. Necessity to practice caution with the laws of nature. We can all plainly see that the human species must lead a social life meaning we cannot exist and sustain ourselves without the help of society. Therefore, imagine an event where one retires from society to a desolate location and lives there a life of misery and great pain due to his inability to provide for his needs. That person would have no right to complain about providence or his fate. And if that person were to do that, meaning complain and curse his bitter fate, he would only be displaying his stupidity. For while providence has prepared for him a comfortable, desirable place in society, he has no justification to retire from it to a desolate place. Such a person must not be pitied, since he goes against the nature of creation. Since he has the option to live as providence has ordered him, he should not be pitied. That sentence is agreed upon by all of humanity without dispute. And I can add and establish it on a religious basis and give it such a form. Since providence extends from the Creator, who undoubtedly has a purpose in his actions, since no one acts without a purpose, we find that anyone who breaks a law from the laws of nature that he has imprinted in us corrupts the purposeful aim, because the purpose is undoubtedly built over all the laws of nature, none excluded, just as the clever worker would not add or subtract even a hair's breadth of the necessary actions to attain the goal. He who spoils even a single law harms and damages the purpose aim, purposeful aim that the Creator has set and will therefore be punished by nature. Hence, we too, creatures of the Creator, must not pity Him because He desecrates the laws of nature and defiles the purpose of the Creator. That, I believe, is the form of the sentence. And I believe that it is not a good idea for anyone to contradict this form that I've given to the sentence, since the words of the sentence are one. For what is the difference if we say that the supervisor is called nature, meaning mindless and purposeless, or saying that the supervisor is wondrously wise, knowing, feeling, and has a purpose in his actions. In the end, we all admit and agree that we are obliged to observe the commandments of providence, meaning the laws of nature. And we all admit that one who breaks the commandments of providence, meaning the laws of nature, should be punished by nature and must not be pitied by anyone. Thus, I mean, this relationship is clear to us. Doesn't matter who the Creator is and how it is. It's the blind nature or the wise and special and great. We have to observe those laws by which we exist. We will, otherwise we will suffer, yes? And therefore we need to learn what these laws are. And this is the law of bestowal that the Kabbalists who attained this give us. And if we don't observe this law of bestowal, then things will be bad for us altogether. There's no 
something that's like laws of religion, but rather only the laws of nature. That's one thing. Secondly, we need to understand that we need, well, from here we understand that we exist in one system, a system in which we're all dependent on one another. Hence, this mutual connection between us and those laws that are in the system are necessary for us in order to exist and not fall from the correct existence of the system whereas we would suffer. That's what's written all together. It's best for us to be in a ten which we started the lesson with and to keep the laws of the ten and to make the ten connected tight to the upper force, to the greater, and then actually by that come to the realization of our goal. Okay?